This is Carolyn Z covering Art Basel on Miami Beach. You can find out more about me as your paradise hunter and vote for me by going to tinyurl.com slash Carolyn Z. Hello Miami Beach and visitors, you've arrived. It's Art Basel 2010. Before you head out to one of the 20 plus shows in Miami and Miami Beach this weekend, stay here a few minutes because the Beach Channel is going to show you some of the best that the beach has to offer. We'll be profiling local artists and taking a look back at last year's Basel. First up, a profile on Beatrice Maniavaro. My name is Beatrice Montivaro, and we are at my studio right now. I first got involved in art when I was going to community college, and I took a photo class. And I think that's when I first started uh, seriously considering pursuing art as a career. I make multimedia art, uh, mostly drawings and painting now but also sculpture, and it's kind of uh, horror, rock and roll, whimsical, trash. For the longest time, the themes in my work had to do with adamant and sort of new wave music or early English punk rock and Disney World and horror movies and superheroes. But I think now it more has to do with uh, horror movies and monsters and rock and roll to a, to a degree, but not specifically English punk rock or adamant. And there's always going to be a hint of Disney World and everything because it was a big influence on my childhood. This is quite a uh, village. It's uh, soon to be released and I'm super pleased that um, I have a book that's coming out. The book is um, a book of a book that I made um, that was one uh, with like uh, watercolor paper that was about this notion of exotica, like um, Polynesian, uh, like in the 50s what they thought of, of as exotic faraway places like Adventureland, Disney World. Um, but with a horror bent and about making a mixtape or a mix CD that I would give out that has the same, that, that has music that would also have the same feeling to it. Like I did something like that last Halloween where I made Halloween CDs, I made like 50. And I also had a book, but that, that one isn't published. And um, where I documented picking the songs and whatnot and some drawings and I gave them out to 50 people. I mean, I knew some of the people, but it was way cooler when, you know, I barely knew the person or they were like the lady at Andiamo or some random person at a bar. They're like, is this your band? I'm like, no, it's Halloween music. I like the idea of uh, creating mystery, if I can, in the world that I think has lost mystery completely. If I wasn't making art, hopefully I would be a mad scientist. My name is Loreal Beltran. Uh, we're here sitting in my studio in Little Haiti. You know, I'm from Venezuela, but I came here at 15, uh, nine years ago. It's really violent. And then, you know, you have the government imposing to you what you should do. They're censoring, they're deciding what shows going to museums. It just seems like everything changed, everything went down. I started with architecture, and then I realized I really like those kind of things, but not to work. As an architect, my problem was always the client, having a client to satisfy. So really, art was the only thing that I could do that way. I always like, you know, when something accumulates and something gains this kind of history. And I was trying to incorporate that into painting. And I had a palette that I always used to paint on like the paintings I was doing for assignments. And I never cleaned it, it was accumulating, accumulating. Till one day I realized the history that was there was much better than any other work that I was doing. From there it was like, you know, I'm just gonna start layering colors and see what happens. So it's pretty much this, you know, two size boxes. You're gonna determine the size of the final paintings. Uh, and then it's a color. 
let it dry. You could never see all the colors that are there at once. Uh, so it almost feels like every color is there. After everything's done, like slicing down. I made myself a suit to, just, uh, to collect sweat. It's sweat is the best thing, you know, it's this transparent thing that no one ever cares to accumulate and see how much sweat you spend on something. I'm gonna wear the suit whenever I do the, the layers. You know, I wanna propose to like a nonprofit space to work with them, like work for them for a certain period of time wearing the suit and then have a show, you know, with a few different pieces but have the sweat, you know, a sweat cube as well in a clear tank and then the the suit displayed on the wall. It's pretty hot in here, so I, I, I'm sure I'll get a lot of sweat. Let's catch up with New York-based collector Captain Cronkite, who gives us a perspective of a visitor during Art Basel Miami Beach. My name is Captain Cronkite, and I'm the founder of Captain Art. Art Basel Miami is the single largest fair at the Miami Beach Convention Center. And along with the satellite fair, Art Basel Miami is the largest contemporary art event in the United States. Kipton Art is something that I started uh, in 2002. And it's really to help emerging artists that don't have representation. A way to connect with gallery owners and collectors with the hope of getting gallery representation. I always come to Art Basel. For me, it's a way to see friends and meeting artists and, and talking to them about who they're representing them at the moment and ways that Kipton Art can help, help them. We're always trying to connect them with galleries around the world. just arrived here at the hotel and uh, basically I'm gonna go out tonight and uh, hit a few parties. The first uh, first one I'm gonna go to is the Whitney party which is on the, the beach next to the water. Um, then after that we're gonna go to the Ocean Drive party at uh, the collector's home and check out the art there and the scene which will be a lot of fun. And then we're gonna go to the Aqua Art Fair. It's going to be really interesting to see who made it this year. I mean, I know a lot of people canceled. We're going to be seeing Gary, who's one of the uh, curators, senior curators, uh, for the Whitney uh, Biennial. How the selection's going? Are you finished? It's yeah, good. We're, we're done selecting artists, and now we're piecing it all together, and we're um, you know, we're getting ready for installation, and it's, um, it's coming along really well. So, how do you follow the history of the Whitney with these selections? It must be well. We've been really attentive to the history of the Biennial. We've been looking back even to the 30s, to the first very first Biennials, and seeing how the show has kind of evolved over the years and the different um, sort of expectations that people have for it, the different sort of um, motivations the curators have taken to the show. And, um, you know, we're really looking at the biennial as a real kind of marker of how the institution tells its own story and tells the story of American art. So we're, right. we're really thinking about that in a, in a really serious way. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. See you back in New York. Okay, great. Okay. Well, thanks, Captain. Thanks, We just left the Whitney. It was really humid, very hot. There was no music, uh, unfortunately, but we hope the energy is going to be stronger at the Ocean Drive party, which is uh, in a private home on a, on a private island, I guess. Thank goodness we're on the water. It's a little cooler. There's a nice breeze, and there's some really crazy cool paper artists that are standing around as well. What brought you here? What brought me here is what brings me here every year. It's just a great, energetic environment where you find people that come down here to have a good time, but there's there's certainly a lot of people that are very serious collectors that come down here to, 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 to look at fantastic works of art and yeah. purchase them. And then there are people that are just learning about collecting. And what's nice about Art Basel is that they can go to all the different booths and all the different you know cabinets. Yeah, the different venues and exactly. you mix it up a little bit. They get to touch it, they get yeah. to feel it, they get to smell it. And unlike a museum, or, or, or if you go gallery hopping, you have everything here in front of you. What are your feelings right now versus I would what say, it was the last year? I would say that ago? this year, because of what's happened in the economy, in terms of the economy rebounding a touch, I know that there's still many people out of work, yep. but the stock market has rebounded significantly, and I think that there's a, there's a certain attitude that says things are improving. So I think that the general energy down here is much more positive. And I think that the quality is here. I mean, you, know, you have to talk about quality. I mean, whenever there's quality, you, you will get people that have, you know, knowledge will, will flock to it. And every time I'm in Basel, 
I feel almost a rebirth because I get very excited about it. We'll have to have a drink and some dinner in New York. I love that. I, I appreciate I love that. I appreciate I'm glad that we met time. here. You too. Yeah. Thank you. We just left the Ocean Drive party and we uh, bumped somebody out of the way, the New York style uh, way we do, spill a cab. And uh, <laughs> we're in the car actually headed to the Gen Art party. I feel more relaxed. Cool. Wait, 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 hey, cool. Fantastic. This is pretty cool. I like this. Wow. This is pretty impressive. This is really cool. Oh my god. Eight track stereo. Coming to a place like this where you can actually see the energy of emerging artists and talk to the artists directly and see some of the up-and-comers that are here and see the buzz of the people that are really wanting to support these artists. It's great. We're always looking for a great artists that are up and coming and um, you know cutting edge that we can get on board and kind of help support them and ride that wave with them. And the prices are good too. It's the thing that I'm noticing. You know, for like a thousand dollars, you can really get an incredible piece of art. Whereas years, you know, two or three years ago, you weren't able to do that. It's really beautiful actually. It's violent. They got that right. Overthrow Canal Street, that's the name of the, uh, the installation that's going on. Yeah. Uh, all the photographs are from Canal Street in New York, and uh, we just really wanted to change the way that people were perceiving art fairs. You know, it's not, it's not a museum. Okay. Lost Ford, Johnny Robles, uh, one through one projects, all really talented. We just are trying to get people to start approaching um, the experience of going to art fairs, right. being different, you know. It's impressive that you're doing it. No, thank you very yeah, much. Thanks for taking time. We started with the champagne crowd, basically, and then we came here to the to the beer crowd. I mean, we had like, you know, just hanging out um, outside, enjoying it, laughing it, listening to music, and I like this crowd. Stay right there. This is House of Basil on the Beach Channel.